Hi guys, I'm so very glad this video got even made because an access mod manager bugged out on me when I tried to switch back from Fallout 3 to Fallout 4 and now it doesn't load anymore and for some reason all my mods get deactivated. This was last weekend, I freaked out but I managed to repair it by adding all my plugins manually into the plugin text file the game provides. But oh my god, no idea if I can update mods without a mod manager now. I won't be adding new ones, that's for sure. I'm just so glad I fixed it for the time being so this amazing build here can be shared with you. So welcome to my institute research facility at the edge of the glowing sea. This is my first non-vanilla location. It's one of seven new workshops belonging to the mod Glowing Sea Colonization. It's located at Relay Tower ODB 521. Let's enter the central building through the decontamination cubicle. Nobody has enough. To the people working outside strip up their suits and put them in lockers here. Then they step naked into a decontamination shower. They'll find comfy clean clothes in another locker. Then they can enter the base. It's On the bottom floor are regular like showers well, for the scientists doing way. indoor research. The only restrooms of the facility are located here too. Privacy is something you won't find here. Is this what the old world smelled like? Weird. This yellow community tower has four um, floors. On the second floor, second you'll find a canteen. Excuse the cuts and cuts in changing weather, I had some trouble keeping some of the researchers at their workplaces. It smells. Right now the facility doesn't produce any food. I was going to install the mod vault Food Solutions that offer food synthesizers that produce food. But then the mod manager died and I had Thanks to leave it. So just pretend these here actually produce food and ignore all the complaints please. Most of the building elements are from Settlement Objects Expansion Pack. However, it's seriously lacking in furniture. No institute chairs and no regular tables for some reason. That drove me nuts, I can tell you. So I had to use vault benches. They don't look too bad though. Yes, the third floor is the gym. And yeah, yeah, I, I don't have any gym clothes. So that girl works out in her underwear. But it's fine, you know. They used to stripping down for decontamination and regular checkups. I chose not to strip down the old guy. He'll probably die from heat stroke in that rubber lab coat, but whatever. Because this facility is at the edge of the glowing sea, there aren't constant red storms, sadly. But I roleplay that way as a very deadly place. I can't force the weather for more than a minute at a time though, so yeah, it, the weather changes a lot. The fourth floor is a beautiful relaxation deck where people gather to drink and chat, watch some Glory of the Institute videos. New music though. These people don't party. The Institute breeds very serious individuals. I finally had some use for those looted institute drinking glasses. Hooray! Is this what the old world smelled like? This is the mainframe that runs the base. And yeah, you can see the ambi goes wild with the institute building kit. During broad daylight, the glass walls turn blinding white. Bright lights are also a problem, as you can see. I try to avoid bright weather while recording. 
The white building also has as the water supply and filtration system. There's a wonderful mod that adds these water purifiers and institute themed workstations called AS Craftable Institute Stations. Very cool. I added pipes to them so it looks like the water gets pumped somewhere. The canteen connects to the hospital. The building is shaped like a plus symbol. I like the slightly spooky, low light atmosphere of the hospital on rainy days. The institute chairs and shelves here are from other mods, not SOE. But uh, I'm so glad I finally found them. They are actually guard chairs, so you won't find people sitting. The waiting area is way too big for 26 scientists, but it looks cool. Careful out there. This elevator is buggy, it won't come up, so I'll use the stairs. Down here is the sick bay. Two patients currently. You'll notice I've added greebles everywhere to make it look like an actual high tech place. And monitors and door opener panels. And it's incredibly difficult to do that without clipping because the walls are so thin. If you ain't been up to see Grey Garden, you should go. The whole place is run by robots. Let's ride down to the operating room. First floor. Double security doors, but all doors are open for convenience while recording, so just imagine them all shut. The hospital has its own small greenhouse where they grow medicine plants. For those who work in non-safe environments but not directly out in the open wear cleaner suits. The hardcore outdoor scientists wear the really cool cross-institute expeditionary suits. Nobody has enough to eat. Can't you do something to help? Confirmed. Third floor. There are five dormitories scattered between the research buildings. They can house up to 32 people, I think, but only 26 are currently living there. They look more or less identical. All had these soothing blue lights. The limited furniture selection didn't really leave much room for variation. Yeah. Then again, it's a research facility. It doesn't need to be pretty, just functional. There are no private rooms. This two bedroom is the most privileged reserved for the head scientist.
all research buildings are connected in a sort of loop. The only entrance into the base is the yellow main building. They do alien research on top of general research regarding the effects of radiation. The alien goo is unsafe, so cleaner suit it is. Mm -hmm. Downstairs is a top secret area. Housing a life alien. It's the most depressing site ever. I know. I felt so horrible designing this cage, believe me. Making sure it won't escape. Oh man, this breaks my heart. Oh god, how awful. But, but so far they've not tortured or dissected it. Its buddy upstairs was already dead. They're trying to figure out how to communicate with it, actually. Funny detail, it's a female ghoul who at night, when her job of solving on the floor is done, goes to the canteen to have coffee or the gym. <laughs> it's hilarious. This is the creature lab. The explorers in their fancy suits go out and bring specimen back, and the scientists in here study them. I actually think they're kind of cute. This is the brightest room when Sunny gives you eye cancer. Just awful. I picked the cleanest looking saddlers for this base. All the tubes have support pillars. I mean, it may not be the most practical design in the world, but at least it holds together. Naturally, I was being an idiot at first and built the platforms before the tubes, which of course didn't work out. So I had to rearrange all building bases to fit the tubes, and that was a lot of work. Yeah, they also do some stargazing when there isn't a rat storm, because why not? This is another small coffee corner, just for a quick re-energizing or nervous drinking before the terminal cancer diagnosis. You know. Oh. Unfortunately, the benches do not have the White Institute color scheme, so that kind of clashes with the blue bats, but couldn't be helped. Damn you, SOE! The scraping sound you hear is from the rooftop turrets. I'd go insane if I had to listen to that all night.
This is the information center. They have surveillance on certain places. They also hey. pool all research data here and feed it into the holo map. Poor guys, air typing because there are no animations for low desks. Why is that? So weird. This is the Flora Lab. They study the effects of radiation on the vegetation and also grow new plants to be used as crops indoors as well as outdoors. Let me give you a quick rundown of the background of this facility. So, it was built about 30 years ago as a surface research base, led by Chief Scientist Julian Sinclair, who thought it was vital for the Institute to send people out into this radiated hellhole they hate so much to do hands-on research and eventually release their findings to the public. He advocated coming out of hiding and returning to the roots, which was cooperating with the surface population. He did find a small number of supporters and was granted a surface facility, mostly to study super mutants further, without any actual plans by the leaders to interact and share data with the people of the Commonwealth. The facility was cloaked and since continued to be the ones collecting samples and making sure nobody got too close. The base proved useful and it grew larger. When the institute was destroyed by the sole survivor, the scientists and the glowing sea were cut off but they try to remain hidden. Their synths got deactivated too, however, so they started sending out real people, adamant to continue their research. About a year later, their cloak field started to malfunction. That's how my sole survivor Nori found the facility while scouting the area with a handful of Minutemen. The scientists were given the choice to surrender peacefully and continue their research for the greater good. All except two surrendered. So, part of the Institute lives on as humanity's hope for a brighter future still, just now since free. The facility is autonomous but lacks the funding it used to have. In fact, most of the resources to maintain it properly have been destroyed. So, yes. how long will it withstand its unforgiving environment? This is a live creature study cage. I had to use puppets because no animals will stay caged, as you know. And to make matters worse, these are for harbor creatures. So please use your imagination and see red scorpions or something walking around. Colored lights guide the scientists at night. I love the floor yeah, scanning animation, looks so cool here. This space harbors a secret. Can you guess what it is? Let's go check it out.
Yes, a UFO crashed here very shortly before the Institute was destroyed, shattering the facility's force field, leaving the whole place exposed for a week. Fortunately, only Death Claws came running and killed a bunch of the synth, so no big deal, no humans on the base. The UFO was quickly sealed off, the only surviving alien was detained. If you're wondering how logistics work, teleporters of course. The UFO crashed because the researchers worked in the old satellite tower and caught a radio broadcast of a wonderful boy, which proved to work like a virus on the UFO. And now don't ask questions about that scenario. It makes perfect sense. These small satellite dishes around the crash site were put up hoping to establish communication with a possible rescue party. So far, nobody has come for the survivor. Poor little guy. Building this massive settlement took a lot of time, probably around 50 hours, but it was a lot of fun. The terrain is very uneven as you can see. I tried to build as close to the ground as I could while keeping everything connected. Is this what the old world smelled like? Even though these mod locations are supposed to be full settlements with attacks, I haven't seen any attacks yet. In fact, the area is completely devoid of light. I checked out the other six locations, and those do have critters milling about. One even requires to clear out the ghouls first. But this one here is totally peaceful. cycle ain't all bad. Is this what the old world smelled like? Thanks for watching another one of my videos! Due to the situation with my mod manager, I don't know when or if more settlements will happen. But even if my settlement days come to an end, I will keep making modding videos. Maybe finally do those Subnautica based videos, so please stick around. If my game survives the next Creation Club update and I return to building, I will finish Hangman's Alley next. Take care until then!